Rwanda's economy and its people depend heavily on natural resources. These are land, forests, waters and wildlife as they provide the basis for farming, fishing, household energy and tourism. However, these resources are under increasing pressure from a steadily growing population, unsustainable exploitation, soil erosion and climate change. Indeed, research has revealed that the soil loss rate of 15 million tons per year due to soil erosion was costing Rwanda 2% of its GDP annually. This is equivalent to a reduction in the country's capacity to feed 40,000 people every year. To support the government in addressing these issues and promote sustainable development, a joint poverty environment initiative of UNEP and UN Development Program UNDP, was launched in 2005 to solve these challenges and to enhance the contribution of sound environmental management to poverty reduction. You cannot tackle the issue of uh, poverty reduction if you don't consider the linkage with the environmental protection and the sustainable natural resources they use. So the PI uh, came to look at those issues to see how from planning a process uh, through budgeting to implementation and monitoring, the linkage of poverty reduction and environmental protection should be uh, taken care of. The first phase of implementation of the PEI, December 2005 to May 2007, focused on the integration of the environment into EDPRS-1, the first economic development and poverty reduction strategy. It was also to conduct background studies aimed at building the environmental, social and economic rationale for poverty environment mainstreaming. In order to help key government agencies to make the economic case of poverty environment mainstreaming in EDPRS, PEI supported local institutions to undertake a study on the economic cost of soil degradation and an integrated ecosystem assessment. The second phase, June 2007 to December 2009, but subsequently extended until December 2011 and followed by a two-year transition, was designed to support the implementation of the EDPRS, building on the achievements of Phase 1. The third phase, 2013-2017, sought to support the implementation of EDPRS-2 by consolidating the achievements of the first two phases and ensuring that environment and natural resource sustainability would be effectively mainstreamed into the sector's policies and plans and in the district development programs, DDPs. The inclusion of sustainability objectives in first EDPRS-1, then EDPRS-2 and now the National Strategy for Transformation. So those are tremendous successes and Rwanda, of all the, the programs we've worked in across Africa, Rwanda has been the most successful. Also, following findings from a PEI-supported economic analysis of natural resource management, the government of Rwanda rehabilitated the Rujizi wetland, an action that restored electricity production downstream. At the same time, awareness has been raised for the importance of environmental and natural resource management and the linkages between natural resource management and poverty reduction. Critical human and institutional capacity have also been built through a number of workshops and training activities. All this has contributed to changes in behavior and enhancement of capacities. From the capacity building perspective, the staff that are we got to support the staff within the Ministry of Finance but also in other sectors to help mainstream environment and uh, poverty reduction as uh, interrelated aspects. It has really helped us if we talk about capacity building. Now it's not a difficult or new concept in terms of mainstreaming environment and uh, poverty reduction. PEI's activities also involved training of interns in different government institutions for poverty environment mainstreaming. This has been beneficial both at individual and institutional levels. Muri ministeri bikorwa remezo niho nakoreraga irimenyerezwa aya mahugurwa nahawe na PIA yaramfashije cyane kuko byampaye ubumenyi binyongerera ubunararibonye bijyanye na 
gahunda y'ibidukikije kumenya kwinjiza gahunda y'ibidukikije mu igena migambi ry'igihugu bigatuma mbasha kuba umwe mu batsinze bizamini nkaba nkora hano muri remo nkanje nk'umuntu wari winjiye mu kazi maze kubona amahugurwa ya PI ntabwo naje nk'umuntu mushya nari maze kumenya guhuza ibidukikije n'iterambere ry'igihugu kumenya guhuza ibidukikije no gukwivana mu bukene kuko no mundi mishinga nkorera ishinzwe gukura abaturage mu bukene ariko no mundi hifashishijwe ibidukikije The Green Village Pilot Projects of Rubaya in Gicumbi District and Muyebe in Muhanga District are Propua Sustainable Development Projects initiated and led by Rwanda Environment Management Authority REMA with the support of the UNDP UNEP Poverty Environmental Initiative Phase 2 A set of toolkits was designed to provide guidelines for a smart green village in all its components sustainable agriculture water access energy efficiency sanitation and hygiene settlement and housing design value addition chain solid waste management and knowledge hub these villages are a demonstration of how integrated environmental and natural resource management approaches can address the challenge of poverty reduction and economic development in a sustainable way and in a participatory integrated approach and this is an important ingredient for implementing Vision 2020 Omurenge and the Rural Settlement Policy. Mushinga PI washuru kugira ngo ufashe imiryango yavuye muri gishwati yari ije gutuzwa muri uwo mudugudu wa Muyebe akaba nubundi ari ibikorwa byakozwe bigamije cyane cyane kugira ngo abaturage ba bimuwe ndetse nabandi bari batuye hafa aho ngaho bashobore kubaho mu buzima utangize bidukikije mbere twarutuye gishwati ahantu habi hamanuka amazi noneho leta inzana hanera ntuza impinzu impinka abana banje barakura ibintu yadukore ni byiza birarenze kuko giye inzu sinari kuzayubakira we call it a green village because it has all components of greening and protection of the environment the green village includes a number of interlinked components emphasizing the efficient effective fair and sustainable use of natural resources using technologies that optimize social, economic and environmental benefits. The village is endowed with water reservoirs to control water runoff and this makes this essential commodity available to the beneficiaries throughout the year. The iron roofed houses help in rainwater harvesting but also ensure good quality life. <laughs> mugwisa hane gice cyahindutse nuko twajyaga kure none tukaba tuvo mahafi amazi akabara twegereye tukadukora imirimo twisanzuye ariko mbere byaratugoraga mibereho byampinduyeho nambu nakundaga kwambara umwenda utameshe kubera kubura amazi kumesa mbese byarangoraga umwana akambara ibintu bitameshe cyane ariko nkubu ndagerageza sanitation facilities have been provided to each of the green villages in order to decrease the prevalence of waterborne diseases and underlying issues. To curb the soil fertility loss earlier mentioned, terraces have been established for soil erosion control and agroforestry introduced to improve agricultural productivity. The residents of the green villages are aware of their role in environmental protection through tree conservation. <laughs> ninze guza ubuyobozi ntabwo nshobora kwishimira ko umuntu yateme igiti kandi igiti gituma nibura umuya gutaza ngo bwe batwara izi nyubako no kuvuga nk'ibiti najyaga ntema ubu ngubu ntabwo nkibitema ndabireka bigakura kugira ngo nzabisarure bikuze bigeze igihe cyo kugenza gute cyo gusarurwa through the one cow per poor family program, milk production has drastically increased, thus improving food security. The cows also constitute a core component of the biogas system. The cow dung is fed into biogas digesters to produce a clean cooking fuel alternative to firewood and charcoal. Ubungubu nsigaye nkoresha inkwi nkeya cyane amakara yo nta nubwo nkiyagura umufuka wa makara ntabwo warenzaga ibyumweru bitatu akandi ubwo ngo nabaga mfatanyije ni 
amafaranga twakagombye gukoresha mu guteka tuzagenza gute tuzakoresha ibindi The other advantages of this are manifold Apart from reducing deforestation, this system improves indoor air quality but also provides instant manure for cultivation. It also guarantees a regular supply of fresh green vegetables to the village dwellers throughout the year, also thanks to the water harvesting infrastructure. <laughs> The Green Village has a school in the immediate vicinity and this has highly increased the school attendance among children in and outside the villages. Thanks to the integration of poverty environment objectives in local development planning guidelines via EDPRAs supported by PEI, 30 district development plans in Rwanda were endowed with poverty environment and climate related objectives including targets to establish Green Villages. So having founded that concept is very useful. We scaled it up. We went to Ngoma in Lukumberi. We went to Tawa in Nguye. We went again to, to Kabiaza in Nyabihu. The government of Rwanda has now mandated that at least one green village should be developed in each district with this policy to be implemented by the Rwanda Housing Authority supported by Minaloc. This is indeed within the framework of the Integrated Development Program, IDP. So these IDP, they are Integrated Development Program Villages where we settle people, but we have pillars we have to feed. Land consolidation, human settlement in a small area, and then we even went up to have four in one houses in one plot, four houses or four families in one plot. We have marriage purpose homes, woodwork, houses, carpentry, energy, water, sanitation, schools, Programs, laboratories, dining halls, etc., etc. As I speak now, we have already 44 green villages constructed. It is because the two that were supported by PI indicated the success in the poverty reduction and natural resource efficient use. Now we are going to one sector, one village, so that by 2024, the seven year government program every sector will be having an IDP model village with all pillars, including the greening part. One of the principal flagships of the Poverty Environment Initiative program is gender mainstreaming whereby women are seen as the core component of any development endeavor. This is one of the projects of FONERA. National Climate and Environment Fund, which was established with the support from PEI to prop up public and private green and climate resilient projects. The Poverty Environment Initiative program focuses on enhancing the contribution of sound environmental management to poverty reduction, sustainable economic growth, and the achievement of the SDGs. The country program is thereby contributing to the achievement of national development goals and the overall PEI program outputs. Richly, these were people who were very poor. You see th that transformation, that transition in a short time from extreme poverty to middle class. We improve people's lives on the ground and we have improved some people's lives through the Rabia and the Green Village. The achievements have been remarkable and that could only have happened because of the very active support and action by the government of Rwanda. And speaking as a, from a personal professional basis, I find it really inspiring working to support Rwanda. The Poverty Environment Initiative 
PEI is an integral component of Rwanda's development programs such as Vision 2020, the Economic Development and Poverty Reduction Strategy EDPRS, and the World's Sustainable Development Goals SDGs. In the spirit of this PEI's Green Village concept, the replication of such a viable group of households is doubtlessly going to revolutionize the look of Rwanda's rural landscape sustainably in various socio-economic aspects to the advantage of the country's dwellers of the countryside in a protected environment.